For the introductory course of materials, this is going to be the last video. I will keep doing material videos in the future, of course. So if you want to see those, subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but today we're finishing off the like introductory course, like everything that I think you need to know to get started with materials. You're not going to be a material expert once you've watched all this, but you're going to have a good starting point. And the last thing that I want to talk about is a texture projection, because we've been using entirely like UV-based uh, texture rendering up until this point. Uh, but you can actually project textures in world space onto objects. So if you have an object that doesn't like have good UVs, or for any other reason you don't want to uh, use the UV space, you want to project textures onto an object, uh, that is possible. And you can do it from any direction or all directions. So let's take a look at that and make one last material for this course. So what we're going to be doing is we'll call this a material projection. And I will add a world aligned texture node. This takes in a texture object. We talked about that a little bit in the last episode. This is not a texture sample. This is a texture object, quite a little bit different. Uh, we're going to just use a, a texture object here. And we're going to just simply use a, a noise pattern uh, tiling noise. There we go. So if we put that into the texture here. Okay, so now uh, we have a bunch of things that have default values. For the most part, you can just leave these alone. It's actually very, very nice. Uh, and we have a couple of outputs. A XY output, a Z output, and an XYZ. So this one will align this texture, like project it from the X and the Y directions. So that is coming from both of the sides. We can also project only from the Z, which will project it just from the top of the world entirely, again, in world space onto any given object. Uh, we also can do X, Y, Z, which will just like blend everything together. I'm just going to show you uh, by putting these into the base color. Uh, and you can even see like on this, it's projecting from the side. So the very top of it is getting stretched out. You can even see it more if I turn this into a cube, right? From the sides, it actually projects pretty well. This is not using the UVs at all. It's projecting onto it. Uh, the top, it doesn't work quite as well. If I use the Z texture, it will project perfectly uh, from the top, but the sides are, uh, like, they look a little bit like a barcode. <laughs> but if I use XYZ, it will uh, pretty well, like, sometimes the corners are a little soft, but for the most part, it will just project it from all three directions equally pretty well. And since this is being projected in world space, and this is really the cool thing, right? Uh, we can apply this to like a object here. Just imagine that this is like a rock material or something like that. If we actually compile the material, uh, it will now display here. And again, since this is in world space, if we move this around, you can see that it's kind of like showing new parts of the material rather than them sticking to the actual object. And that might seem like, oh, that's not that useful. But now, if I create a second cube and I just put it in a random place, there's no texture seams. The textures are entirely seamless. Well, mostly. Uh, the, the textures are seamless. So if we do this on like a, uh, like, do we have like a rock or something like that? A boulder, maybe? Uh, let's do it with spheres instead. We can just select a material, by the way, by browsing to it like this. And then we have it selected so we can apply it to uh, the next thing that we select. Uh, so with these spheres, it will be a little bit more obvious if I do this. Uh, that we can very easily use this kind of material to like build things that uh, will, especially if we don't have like lighting applied to it. The textures line up fairly well here. So if you have multiple rocks that you're trying to put together to like make a rock formation, a projected material like this uh, could be very, very cool to use. Uh, of course, this is just the texture. We also have a world aligned normal, which is the same thing. We just use a texture object, but we have a normal map instead. And uh, this has a XY texture, XYZ, XYZ flat top, Z texture. Um, you can figure it out pretty easily yourself, I'm sure. And just like with a lot of your nodes, uh, I don't really feel like it might be uh, all too interesting to be going over all of these separate pins because they're pretty self-explanatory, right? The texture size is 
the size of the texture. So if we put in uh, like a 111, I don't actually know what the default value is. It's 64 by default. So if we set this to 32 instead, uh, that might be a little bit more reasonable. And we put that in there, it's going to make the texture twice as small. If we set this to 128, it's going to make the texture twice as big. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the world position is just the data that it uses uh, for the world position. So that's what makes it world aligned. If for any reason you want to make this like local aligned, uh, you can put in like a local position node, or you can do some creative stuff, uh, some creative math. But now if we do this, for example, uh, we should be able to see if we move this, uh, the texture won't change anymore because it's using the local space, uh, which will just project this without it changing the actual texture on it when you move this around so if you have a object that needs to be projected onto for whatever reason uh but also needs to be able to move around without the texture doing weird stuff uh, this is kind of uh what you do for that this is just a bool again uh for exporting uh for float which is honestly something that i've never really looked at and used so it's probably not that important <laughs> this is the world space normal of the object that you're working with and then we have got some projection transition contrast uh, which is just a scalar value these two are the only real important pins i would say uh, everything down here like you can read up on uh it's it's not that important to uh look at for the most part we could just world align texture texture object texture size world position either x and y or z or all three Personally, like, I use a, a world align texture for uh, my floors, just, like, Z projected in my game. Like, every floor is going to be the same size as a result of that. Otherwise, getting the UV scales for every single object that has, like, the floor texture on it to match up with each other so that all the floor tiles always are consistently the same size is actually a nightmare. Uh, so just world projecting that from the Z up is a very easy way to make sure hey it's always consistent again this was more of a i just want you to know that this exists kind of video to round off the material course with we're now finished with the material course so there's going to be like a full upload uh with all of the parts of it that's not to say again that we're not going to be making any more material related contents going forward uh, there's a lot of things to talk about, but at this point, I think you have a pretty good start to uh, start looking up more specific how to make X, Y, or Z, instead of just really needing like a basic understanding of how the material system works. And part of that is also because I want to, at some point in the future, maybe it'll be following up this, maybe it'll be something in between, I want to make a um, particle, a Niagara course as well. And particles and materials are inherently very tightly linked together. So I needed to do this first before I could uh, start with particles, because if people don't know how to make materials, I can refer them to this playlist or this full course or whatever. So thank you everybody for watching. We're going to be back with another course. Again, it might be particles. It might be something else. I am not entirely sure yet. Uh, it's been a lot of fun recording this, and I'll see you later. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my cave digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas,